Good morning. Welcome February 3rd, 2022. Hope you're enjoying the snow and the cold that follows. I'm Evan Gertner. I'm the pastor at our Shepherd Lutheran Church. Pastor Woodfin and I, every day at 8.45 a.m., are providing these morning devotions, giving you an opportunity to start your day with the Word of God and prayer. Today we start with Psalm 47. It's a psalm of praise that gives us the foundation reasons for why we pray that uh, God in creation is God that is at work. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to the Lord with songs of joy, for the Lord Most High is awesome, a great king above all the earth. He subdued people under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises, for God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God is King over all of the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth have belonged to God, and he is the one that is highly exalted. Our call for praise, our reason for praise, the reason we have confidence that God is a God that we should love and trust in and hold above all things is he is the one that has created this world, preserves and protects this world, and now gathers us to him so that together we may be a community built on the foundation of God's love. Our Old Testament reading is from Zechariah, and it's, a, it's kind of a dark reading, to be honest. Zechariah is that kind of book with... A, some end times and uh, this chapter chapter 14 is looking at uh, some warfare and some victory it says see a day is coming for the Lord when the plunder taken from you will be divided in your midst I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle and the city shall be taken and the houses looted and the women raped and half the city shall go into exile but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. On that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives, which lies before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west. There's going to be a very wide valley, so that one half of the mount shall withdraw northward and the other half southward. You shall flee by the valley of the Lord's mountain. The valley between the mountains shall reach to Azael, and you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah of Judah. And then the Lord God will come, and all the holy ones with him. On that day there will be neither cold nor frost. It shall be a continuous day. It's a day that's going to be known to the Lord. It's not day, it's not night. It's evening, yet there shall be light. And on that day living waters are going to flow out from Jerusalem half to the eastern sea and half of them to the western sea. It shall continue in summer, as it will in winter. The Lord will become king over all the earth, and on that day the Lord will be one, and his name will be one. The whole Lord, the whole land, shall be turned into a plain from Geba to Ramon south of Jerusalem. But Jerusalem is going to remain aloft on the site from the gate of Benjamin to the place of the former gate to the corner gate from the tower of Hanel to the king's wine presses. It's going to be inhabited. Never again is Jerusalem going to be doomed to Jerus doomed to destruction. Jerusalem is going to abide in security. But this is going to be a plague with which the Lord will strike all the peoples that wage war against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall rot while they are still on their feet, and their eyes shall rot in their sockets, and their tongues shall rot in their mouths. On that day a great panic from the Lord is going to fall on them, so that each will seize the hand of a neighbor, and the hand of one will be raised against the hand of another. Even Judah will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations is going to be collected, gold, silver, and garments, all in great abundance. It's a plague, like this plague. It's going to fall on the horses, the mules, the camels, the donkeys, and whatever animals may be in those camps. And all those who survive of the nations that have come up against Jerusalem, they're going to go year after year, and they're going to worship the king, the lord of the hosts, they're going to keep the Feast of Booths. And if any of the families of the earth don't go to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, 
There's going to be no rain upon them. And if the family of Egypt does not go up and present themselves, so will come a plague from the Lord that's going to afflict the nations that do not go up to the Feast of Booths. Such shall be the punishment of Egypt. Such shall be the punishment of all the nations that don't go up to this festival. On that day, there's going to be inscribed on the bells of the horses, holy to the Lord. And the cooking pots in the house of the Lord shall be holy as the bowls in front of the altar. And every cooking pot in Jerusalem and Judah is going to be sacred to the Lord of hosts, so that all who will sacrifice may come and use them to boil the flesh of the sacrifice. There shall no longer be traitors in the house of the Lord of the hosts of that day. This is how the book of Zechariah finishes. So it's going to finish with a warfare. And this warfare is not something that's working against God. In fact, it says... The day is coming for the Lord when the plunder taken from you will be divided in your midst. And I'm going to gather all the nations against Jerusalem into battle. God's going to bring this battle about. And it's going to seem kind of random in this text. It describes how 50 go this way, 50 goes this way. The mountain splits, some of the waters go this way. There's this kind of randomness that you feel is happening during times of suffering. And yet, Zechariah 14 is pointing out all of these moments that, to our perspective, have random suffering struggles to them God's at work in that he's going to be as verse 9 says king over all the earth and on that day the king will be one and his name is going to be one as everything seems to start to fall apart in the world around us God says my name is going to be the one that's held aloft and the nations will come to me and there will be a blessing and a nurturing Verse 8 points out, on that day, living waters are going to flow out from Jerusalem. And just as the destruction went one way and another way, the living waters are going to flow to the east and to the west. It's going to come, whether it's summer or winter, whether it's the dry season or the wet season, the living waters are going to flow. I realize that in Zechariah, there's a lot of symbolic imagery that can be difficult even the idea that God is bringing about this battle is so hard to understand. But I want you to know that the, the sense of chaos, and the sense of disorder that happens in times of suffering, it's not always a mistake. God is working in these times. That can be difficult to have faith that God is in the midst of our sufferings. But... This is where the scriptures lead, is to say that the God who spoke with a word and created the heavens and the earth is the same one that comes in the midst of this age that we are in, of times of warfare and conflict, and it's by his name we will be saved. Paul in Philippians 2 writes about this, about how there's going to come a time when every knee is going to bend, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. How's that time going to happen? the Lord will be at work and he will make sure it's accomplished. So this was Zechariah chapter 14. I encourage you to read Zechariah as a whole, as a unit. Maybe if you can, do as much of it in one sitting and find that movement from chaos to order, from destruction to rebirth and find in all of that the promise that God is at work. If your own life is going through a time of suffering and destruction, disorder and chaos, I want you to know that God is at work in this world. He is the Lord over all things. We're going to close now our time with prayer. Oh Lord, we pray that your grace would always go before and follow after us, that we may be continually given to do all of the good works that you have prepared in advance for us to do. We pray all of this through Jesus Christ, the one who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. In the midst of all that is falling apart, I want you to know that the love of Christ is here, this day and each day, to hold you together.